Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well and staying safe during this unusual time. My name is Amir Tafreshian, and today I'm presenting my work on using subsidies to stabilize peer-to-peer -peer registry markets with rural assignment. This is my hundredth time recording, and I hope this one will get through. In recent years, we have observed a significant increase in traffic congestion all over the globe. <clears throat> there are several factors that contribute to the growing traffic congestion from which probably the biggest one is an increase in the number of solo drivers and commuting from home to work and vice versa. It is shown that shared mobility in general and peer-to-peer -peer ride sharing in particular can effectively shift a large portion of these drivers towards sharing their rides and thereby alleviating traffic congestion. An important consideration for these services is whether they can retain their users in the long run. Here, I will talk about the stability of market in these services because market stability is a requirement for such services to become a viable transportation option in practice. Peer-to-peer -peer ride sharing is a form of shared mobility services that provides a platform for peers to share their rides while completing their own personal trips. I want to emphasize the fact that peer-to-peer -peer ride sharing is different from transportation network companies like Uber and Lyft, where the main intention of drivers is serving passengers to make profit. In the literature, peer-to-peer -peer ride sharing is often modeled as a two-sided market, where we have two disjoint sets of riders and drivers. In this study, however, we assume that all participants, or at least a portion of them, are available to play either roles depending on which one maximizes their utility. We also assume that our system operates in a region that consists of M stations. Uh, for this region, the shortest path travel time and distance between every two stations are given in matrices tau and delta respectively. Also in this study, we assume a static ride sharing system in which all the information is known prior to making a decision by the uh, operator. Every day, a subset B of users register their trip uh, in the system, and the trip information includes origin and destination uh, and time windows. Next, the operator tries to maximize the social welfare while finding a stable outcome. I mean, a, a matching pricing and role assignment that satisfies some conditions. I will talk more about the stability later, but to give you a sense, a stable outcome is one in which no pair of unmatched users can be better off by leaving their current partners and joining together. Studying stability is important because in an unstable market, users lose their trust in the system and stop participating in the following days. Okay, now let me describe that our system of interest can be actually represented by a weighted directed graph uh, with node set V and eight set E. As, this is, uh, as it is shown in this example, you see that every user is shown by a node. Also a directed edge from node U to node V means that user U is giving a right to user V. This edge exists in E if user U is capable of giving a right to user V while satisfying the spatiotemporal constraints that are presented in these two equations. Also, we assume that the valuations of users are governed by their mileage savings or excesses. Therefore, uh, valuation of user V, which is matched with user U, can be defined by eta if user V is a driver and this is always a non-positive value, and by theta if user V is a rider, and this is always a non-negative value. Uh, finally, the weight of an edge is the sum of valuations of users involved in that match. Based on our definition, it actually is, it is equal to the vehicle mice travel saving, VMTS, uh, but here we refer to it as the potential gain. And it must be always positive because otherwise it is not rational for these participants to share their rights together. All right. The matching between the users in this system can be modeled as a maximum weighted matching problem in general graphs, as shown in this formulation. 
As you may know, this problem is polynomial time solvable by Edmund's algorithm. I just want to mention that there might be two edges between every two nodes. As you see, between node three and node four, there are two edges. This means that both of these users are capable of giving right to the other one. It turns out that we can use proposition one described here to reduce the size of graph by picking the edge that has a higher weight between every two vertices. Doing this does not compromise the optimality of the solution because the matching problem uh, that contains the edge with higher weight always dominates uh, the matching problem in which uh, the lower weight edge is included. Now let's talk about the market game in more details. First, um, in this market, we assume a quasi-linear utility function for each user that again depends on the user match with user V and the role of user V in this match. Based on these functions, the payoffs for every user can be defined as the difference between the valuation and payment. Also note that the payments are assumed to have a unit of mile, and we can use a constant to change their units to a dollar. Before defining stability, I want to present two definitions. The first one is an outcome, which is defined as a joint um, matching and a vector of payoffs. You can think of payoffs uh, for each user as the share of the potential gain of a match allocated to that user. Also, based on definition two, the outcome is feasible if there is a feasible set of payments um, and also a feasible matching that satisfies all these three conditions. The first condition says that if um, participant U is matched to participant V, the sum of the payoffs should be equal to the potential gain of that match. And also, whatever rider pays, the driver uh, receives. The second, <clears throat> the second condition says that if a user V is not matched to another user, then the payoff should be equal to zero. And finally, the third condition is about individual rationality, which imposes that the payoff of each user should be always greater than or equal to zero. Now, based on these two definitions, we are ready to define stability. The feasible outcome is stable if there is um, no pair of U and B that are unmatched and, this, and the sum of their payoffs is less than the potential gain between them. We refer to these pairs as blocking pairs. And the reason the outcome is called unstable is that the users involved in a blocking pair can always increase their payoffs by leaving their current partner and joining together. Based on what we covered so far, we can say that P2P ride sharing with, the, uh, with role assignment can be modeled as a roommate problem with transferable utilities. I guess it was uh, Ericsson and Carlander in 2001 uh, that they showed there might be no stable outcome for this game. So what can we do? In the literature, different treatments have been introduced to deal with unstable markets. These include minimum blocking value or minimum bl blocking pairs to find near stable outcomes or modify the underlying unstable graph to a stable one, by, for example, adding or deleting a minimum number of edges or vertices or adding a minimum amount of weights uh, to the edges. I'm in particular interested in the last one because it has a meaning in the context of our ride sharing system. It can be considered as adding the minimum amount of subsidy to a select set of users um, to make ride sharing markets stable. We refer to this problem as the minimum subsidy problem that can be uh, formulated as a mixed integer nonlinear program presented here. In this formulation, we introduce a vector of S sub U V that can be added to the potential gain of every edge to make the system stable. Using a number of claims, we provided a tight mixed integer program formulation as presented here. 
Unfortunately, it has already been shown that a, specific, a special case of this problem with unit weights is NP hard. So for solving large scale instances of this problem, we developed a Lagrangian relaxation based method. In fact, in the myth formulation of this problem, the third constraint can be replaced in the objective function. And also the last two uh, sets of constraints can be relaxed and their slacks can be added to the objective function with the help of uh, Lagrangian multipliers phi and psi. By relaxing those two constraints, we can show that the Lagrangian relaxation subproblem can be decomposed into a matching problem and an altered version of mean vertex problem. Interesting thing about uh, this subproblem is that these two problems can be solved in polynomial time and more importantly, in parallel and independent from each other. Also, since the solution of subproblems may not attribute to a feasible outcome, we define the upper bound problem that generates a feasible solution. In this problem, we fix the matching from the subproblems, and hence we solve an LP to find the feasible solution for payoffs and subsidies. As you see, this problem provides an upper bound, and also the subproblems provide a lower bound for the minimum amount of subsidy. Uh, using subgradient optimization method, we iterate between these two steps until we converge. All right. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about our numerical experiments where we applied our methodology to a portion of New York City taxi data set, where um, here I talk about a few important results. First, I want to talk about the impact of considering role flexibility in a ride-sharing market. For this, we compared a system in which 50% of the users have role flexibility with 100 random two-sided market equivalents of them. I mean, a system in which all users have already specified their roles. As you see in the left figure, letting half of users be flexible in taking both roles of a rider or a driver uh, actually results in a substantial increase in social welfare. Also, in the right figure, we have described two groups of individuals. The first group, is um, representing those users um, uh, who had fixed roles in both models. In the second group, um, there are those users that have fixed roles in the first model and uh, flexible roles in the second model. And as you see, in group one, they don't experience a, a, a significant difference between the payoffs under the two models. But the second group, actually experience a higher payoff almost for all of them um, uh, in the model with role flexibility. The next graph shows the convergence rate of LR method compared to the conventional branch and bound method. As you see in this figure, our method can close the gap in less than two minutes for a system with 4,000 users, while branch and bound has a large gap, about 96% in five minutes. Um, finally, I want to show that no matter the parameter setting, the social welfare for a stabilized system is almost equal to the maximum possible social welfare. And we do this by adding a very small amount of subsidy, uh, about less than 0.3%. More precisely, in the uh, left figure, the relative social welfare is the ratio between the stabilized and the maximum possible uh, social welfare. And all the values over all scenarios that we considered are close to 100%. Also, the relative subsidy in the right figure is described as the ratio between total subsidies and the gained social welfare. And this figure shows that all over the scenarios, this rate is always lower than 0.3%. This clearly shows that our proposed treatment yields promising results with real-world data set. With that, I want to conclude my presentation and thank all of you for attending. Now I will be happy to take your questions.